explanation, but that it's inevitable. There isn't another alternative. And you hear this today all the time. Oh, if you hate capitalism so much, give me an alternative. What is it? Socialism? What is it? Communism? Right? As though there isn't and could never conceivably be another alternative to capital. Of course there can be another alternative to capital. There's many alternatives to capital. But the point is that the system will not allow or justify alternatives to capital because any alternative to capital is immediately um, degraded, right? It's immediately disqualified. And the example that I gave earlier in the series was um, the account of um, Johann Galtung's structural violence um, and its relationship to Jonathan Kozel's uh, educational appropriation, um, wherein Kozel says uh, the relationship between property tax and educational opportunities is completely fallacious, right? There doesn't need to be a relationship between property tax and educational opportunity, but what you end up buying is ownership, right? I work hard so I can afford my children an excellent first class education because I have $15,000 a year to spend on my kids education, right? Because I'm able to do that, um, it would be unfair, says the discipline, says capital, says the, the system of false consciousness, for me to give you any of my money, my hard work, so that your kid can be educated. That's just not fair. Right, so that's that's the narrative that's constructed. That's how this is implemented, right? False consciousness is implemented by um, assuming that capital becomes the only and the inevitable consequence of all of our social and economic um, relationships. So what ends up happening, and this actually comes from Althusser, I'm not gonna get into Althusser to uh, relate too much, but the, res the repressive state apparatus works by ideological control, right? So that the system is set up to control the behavior of the proletariat. And I'll draw an image and then we'll contrast that with the post-structuralist account. So all of that, all of that discourse that I just said was um, the Marxist conception of false consciousness. All of that is going to be denied by the post-structuralist, which will really give you an, a, a solid understanding of what the post-structuralist is arguing for because they're actually arguing against that Marxist conception. So in the Marxist conception, we have um, hegemonic power. Hegemonic power seeks to control its power. So what it does is it creates this system of delusion, my phrase. Probably spot it wrong, sorry, it doesn't matter. They create this, so hegemonic power creates this system of delusion. The system of delusion is itself based on um, ideological, um, ideological, f um, I guess, formation. Because it's not just one ideology, right? This system is in part based on, so hegemonic power, and this is Marx, false consciousness, C-O-N-S-C-I-O-U. Right. So the argument is, and they, again, false consciousness is not directly, explicitly Marx, but um, hegemonic power creates a system of delusion. One aspect of this system of delusion is ideological formation, right? So I'm described to the ideology. The other aspect of the system of delusion, as we've seen, is the, the belief within the proletariat, right? We want to create the belief within the proletariat. Um, of, and this is and this is very very important right this is very important of the belief of a a division and justification J U S T I F I justification of labor right it's inevitable that some people are going to be lazy and not going to want to work right the combination of these two things the combination of these two things Right, directed towards the um, the targeted oppressor, uh, oppressed the individual I want to keep encaged and oppressed. Right, this is directed towards them. What I end up doing is I end up spouting the ideologies. The harder you work, the more justified you are in in um, having stuff. Right, the ideology is set up as a system of delusion to keep me engaged. Right, to keep me from actually attacking the powers that be, so like taxation without representation, right? 
Um, so the ideology is set into motion, is put into place to control me, and then what I recognize is I, I now compete against, right? I now, we're, all, we're both actually in cage. It's really diabolical, right? We're both in cage, right? And um, uh, Freire does a, a wonderful account of this, right? We're both oppressed. But what I say is that I'm better. I'm better than this person is, right? I'm better than this person is because I work harder than that person does, right? So now there's opposition between the groups, right? So you have a class warfare, right? The upper class, the middle class against the lower class, when in fact hegemonic power is reigns above all of this, right? So we're, we're um, the middle class is saying, look at the lower class, right? They're, 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 they're lazy, they're bum, they're, they're welfare recipients, they're, you know, they're whatever, you fill in the blank, right? These people are aspiring to be like these people, so they're buying all the expensive purses and watches and clothes that they can't really afford, which further subordinates them. And what ends up happening is all the time they're bickering between each other and they're justifying, right? They're justifying their attack based on the ideology that they were given, right? And all of this keeps them oppressed, right? All of this keeps them oppressed. There's a lot more to it, but that's like the super, super general account. Okay, so we want to critique that, right? And here's the post-structuralist response to um, false consciousness in Marx, right? So the first thing to recognize is that post-structuralist is going to re reject this, right? Post-structuralist rejection of false... Post-structuralist rejection of false consciousness. So let me read... Um, uh, an extended quote on page 14, just so that you have an understanding of how, and I'll go through this uh, a few times. First, the appeal to distorted consciousness, right, false consciousness, the appeal to distorted consciousness is unhelpful if there is no consciousness that is not distorted. That's a fair argument, right? If it's the case that every proletariat, every member, right, not non-bourgeois, every member of the proletariat is being willfully misinformed, then if they're all willfully misinformed, the point is, well, it's unhelpful if there is no consciousness that is not distorted. We can't make sense of what the significance of false consciousness is if everybody is collectively being deceived, right? So the first critique is um, not helpful if everyone deceived. It's not helpful if everyone is being deceived, right? Obviously, the post-structuralists take into account that those in control of hegemonic power aren't being deceived. You would have to be charitable to Marx on that sense, right? Hegemonic power constructs the system of delusion in which we justify the ideologies, right? Um, so it's, 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 the first point is, well, it's not very helpful if everyone is being deceived. The next point is, second, the idea of a group consciousness is a fiction. And the idea of consciousness should be replaced with other ideas such as discourse, habitus, or background that capture the sense in which the structures of social behavior often are below the threshold of consciousness, conscious decision making, perhaps at the level of the body. Now this is a pretty powerful critique, right? The critique is that there is no such thing, no such thing as group or collective consciousness. Okay. The next point of the post-structuralist rejection of um, Marxian false consciousness is that there is no such thing as group or collective consciousness. I'll read it again right second. The idea of group consciousness is a fiction, and the idea of consciousness should be replaced with other ideas, such as discourse. So instead of talking about group consciousness, we should be talking about discourse, or habitus, or background, right? Because these things um, have more um, have more use, have more function in an analysis of culture than the idea of somehow talking about group consciousness, right? That capture the sense in which the structures of social behavior often are behold the threshold, below the threshold of conscious decision making, perhaps at the level of the body, right? So the, the, the fact that, and we'll get to this in a second, the fact that it might be empirically the case that members of subordinated populations, the middle class, the, 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 the lower class, 
are subordinated by this notion of false consciousness.